it's tough being cooped up all the time and it's important to find things that feed your soul. For me, live music, live sport and art are things that feed my soul and one of the many things I miss during this time of lockdown is having a few moments to spare in London when I can visit one of our wonderful art galleries. So what I'd like to do now is take you on a trip to London virtually. But first, let's listen to the reading set for the third Sunday of Easter. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So let's go to London and to Trafalgar Square and then just adjacent to the square is the National Gallery. You enter through the magnificent portico entrance is free so you can just walk in although they might just want to check your bag. Then go up, go through the main staircase to the galleries on level two, pass through the wonderful central hall and keep going all the way to the end to room 31 which features 17th century Italian art. As you enter room 31 turn to your right and you will see La Cena in Emmaus, the supper in Emmaus by the Italian Baroque master Caravaggio. It depicts the moment in the Emmaus story when it says that the disciples' eyes were opened and they recognised him. To give you an idea of its scale, the figures are pretty much life-size. Caravaggio painted this picture at a time when the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius were the new thing in Rome and people were encouraged to imagine themselves into the story, to be present with the events as they unfold. And you will see that here you can almost take your place at the table with Jesus. 
Now, although this is late on in the story, and the disciples and Jesus are now sat down, Caravaggio doesn't want to lose the idea of the journey that's brought them to this point. If you look around the neck of the figure on the right, there is a shell, a symbol of pilgrimage, of journeying. No one knows exactly how the shell came to symbolise pilgrimage. Maybe those en route to Santiago de Compostela carried a shell as a drinking vessel so that they could scoop up water along the way. Some say the markings of the scallop shell show how we start at different points but all converge and come together in the end. But that idea of journeying is important. Not just the physical walking from one place to another, but the inner journey, the journey from confusion and bewilderment to understanding and to happiness. In the story, it is Easter Sunday evening. These two disciples knew that the tomb, Jesus' tomb, had been found empty. They had heard that the women were saying that they'd seen an angel and that Jesus was reportedly alive. But Cleopas and his friend were not in Jerusalem waiting to see what all this was about. They were seven miles away, heading home for the night. St. Luke doesn't tell us of a group of people expecting Jesus to rise from the dead, or for that matter, of a group of people who on seeing an empty tomb said, Ah, that'll be it. Jesus is risen again. He tells us about people who are shocked and confused by the events of that Sunday morning. Look at the servant, the waiter. Some people reckon this is a self-portrait. This is Caravaggio. But it looks to the world as if he hasn't got a clue what's going on. I think Caravaggio was confused by Christianity and by life in general. As a five-year-old, he had to flee from their home in northern Italy because of a pandemic. His mother died when he was just 13. He found himself penniless and sleeping rough, and he was always getting into trouble. Serious trouble. Here then is Caravaggio, putting himself in the midst of a story that says that Jesus is alive, and that you can meet him, and that you can have a relationship with him. And Caravaggio, on his journey, is trying to make sense of it all. I love that honesty, that openness, that readiness to hear the claims of Christianity, but to want to make it make sense to our messy and confusing lives. Now, going back to Caravaggio's painting, what do you notice about Jesus? Okay, firstly, he doesn't look like the Jesus we see in movies or stained glass windows. He doesn't have a beard. His hair is a bit different, and has he put on weight? I love this picture of Jesus. Because, and I hate the word, but you know what I mean, because he looks relatable. The writer Philip Yancey refers to a Prozac Jesus and says of how he's portrayed in movies, I realised Jesus' personality matched that of a Star Trek Vulcan. He remained calm, cool and collected as he strode like a robot among excitable human beings on Spaceship Earth. But he says that's not what I found portrayed in the Gospels. What he read in the Gospel was that other people affected Jesus deeply. Obstinacy frustrated him. Self-righteousness infuriated him. Simple faith thrilled him. Indeed, he seemed more emotional and spontaneous than the average person, not less, more passionate, not less. At least Caravaggio's Jesus looks like someone you can relate to. Now, of course, the disciples do recognise Jesus, and here the painting is almost 3D. The disciple on the left jumps back in his chair. His elbow looks as though it's bursting through the canvas. And the disciple on the right, with his arms outstretched, is almost grabbing us to say, look! I was a teenager when I went from just believing in God, which I think I've done for most of my life, to forming a relationship with Jesus and knowing that Jesus is right here 
in the midst of everything. And it's an astounding discovery. It does make you step back, just as this picture says. The story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus is a story about recognising Jesus in our midst. Knowing that Jesus is with us, the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. The great preacher John Wesley travelled more than 250,000 miles, preaching thousands of sermons to millions of people. But on his deathbed he repeated only one thing. The best of all is, he said triumphantly, the best of all is, God is with us. If we recognise that truth, if we recognise Jesus in our midst, not just in the sacred places, but right here, in the everyday, in our encounters with others, if we do this, then the whole of our lives will be transformed. Now, finally, I just want to draw attention to some of the other features of the picture. Some of you will be worried that the bowl of fruit is just about to fall onto the floor. There's an amazing detail in the kind of still life on the table. But also in things like the chair on the left, you can see the joinery, you can see how it's made. This is no ethereal scene, no otherworldly encounter. This is real life. But that's what Caravaggio did. In 1602, he painted a St. Matthew for the church of San Luigi de Franceschi in Rome. It showed the barefooted saint sitting with his legs crossed in a manner that made one foot appear to project out of the picture. The commission was rejected, apparently because the priest said the figure had no decorum. The priests apparently did not want a dirty bare foot, no matter how saintly, thrust upon them. And Caravaggio had to paint a second version where the saint kneels, politely keeping his feet to himself. And this is the same. You've got the rustic character of the two apostles, the innkeeper serving at table with a hat on his head. Often Caravaggio would show the apostles as dirty, ragged and unkempt. And I like that because it says that this encounter with Jesus takes place amidst the realities of life. And maybe in the context of stuff that's a bit messy and ragged. Wherever you are on your journey, however confused and bothered and bewildered you are by everything that's going on, I hope our trip not just to London, but to Emmaus, thanks to Caravaggio, I hope that all that makes it clear that even if we haven't got it sorted yet, Jesus is here, the Lord is here, and that, that has the power to change everything. Take care, keep safe, and may God bless you.